Welcome in to the DNVR Avalanche Podcast, presented by DraftKings Sportsbook, the number one rated sportsbook app out there. I am your host, Rudo, joined as always by AJ Hayfley and an amazing black screen today. Uh, first of all, our DraftKings pick of the week for today. AJ being a smart better, going with something that actually makes sense, taking Clemson to win the NCAA football championship Plus 175. I mean, for as good as he tells me this Trevor Lawrence guy is, that seems like good money. Look, Trevor Lawrence is the best pro prospect since Peyton Manning. Um, And as long as he's healthy, he's fine. If he's not healthy, the number one recruit in the nation last year is the guy backing him up. And then, oh, by the way, they also have Heisman candidate Travis Etienne in the backfield, as well as a slew of awesome wide receivers. So, I'm picking money. I'm picking Clemson. Sorry, Alabama. I I like the bet. They are the favorites, and you can still make some decent money on it. I, on the other hand, went completely off of the rails. I went over to golf, and I said, you know what? The Masters is coming up. Not this weekend, but I believe next weekend. And you can bet on Larry Mize to win the Masters. Larry Mize, who is that? I have absolutely no idea. What I do know is his betting odds are plus 200,000. So, put $2 on that, and you could become a rich man if it does end up happening. Take AJ's bet, make yourself some money. Take my bet, definitely lose yourself some money, but maybe, just maybe, you make yourself an insane amount of money. That's my thinking on it. Take one of the two. Head on over to DraftKingsSportsbook.com. You can make yourself a lot more money than that, especially coming up on Sunday. They're offering an amazing deal right now where if you want to bet on the NFL tomorrow, your first $100 in bets are completely covered. If you lose them, DraftKings will reimburse you for them. So it's basically playing with house money. You jump on it right now if you haven't signed up with an account yet over on that DraftKings Sportsbook app. Get on it. Make your bets. Bet on who you like. Download that top rate DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code RAINBOW to make sure you get signed up for this can't-miss offer of the $100 insured. Again, that's code RAINBOW on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Must be 21 or older, Colorado only. Risk-free coverage paid out in site credits. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-522-4700. Good RAINBOW. On that note, Kubrimba. One of the uh, one of the best bets Sackick has made so far was uh, patiently waiting to trade Matt Duchesne a few years ago. Now, yeah. Uh, before we get to the actual deal, can I just give some shout outs? Go nuts! Yesterday we had uh, the birthdays of a couple of our listeners. They knew who they are. I forgot about it yesterday, so I'm getting <laughs> to it today. So happy birthday! <laughs> Special shout out to the guy who emailed me uh, with his personal story and how the Colin Wilson interview meant a lot to him. That was also very cool. I did not forget about you. Um, I'm just trying to do something behind the scenes to hook you up. But shout out to you. Also, shout out to the people who are dressed as mailboxes in Philadelphia, (laughs) dancing in the streets to Missy Elliott. Excellent. Uh, I have watched that video that 14 second video with the, also with the dude dressed as city hall uh dancing and uh just got to say it was very entertaining <laughs> well all right congratulations to birthday people it was also my wife's birthday yesterday so shit i didn't even know that yeah lucky day uh exactly. today I guess it's not really the Avs' birthday, but uh, certainly cause for celebration as it's the anniversary of the Matt Duchesne trade. And not uh, n- not not necessarily a, a birthday, but that day that trade certainly was the rebirth of the Avalanche there you organization. Go. There you go. Boom! Full circle. Got him. Look, when the trade happened, let's. I guess let's start there. I don't think anyone was surprised that Matt Duchesne was leaving. 
Uh, it had been circulating for a long time at that point that he wanted oh. out. There had been 800 million trade rumors. Let's talk about those. Yeah, sure. Because I would, uh, before we get into the actual deal itself, let's talk about some of the could have been deals. Old Travis Hamannick in a second. Because <laughs> <laughs> you remember, he, it's funny because two of the teams in that chase that did not get him were Nashville and Columbus. Yep. Two teams he eventually played for. Yep. So that right there tells you, Jesus, Ottawa. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> but Columbus, do you remember? They were talking Josh Anderson, Gabriel yep. Carlson, Boone Jenner, draft picks. Yep. But Yarmo Kikalainen did not want to give up draft picks. Did not want to do it. We're going to get there, Spence. But didn't didn't want to give up draft picks and players. It was like futures deal or NHL players, but one or the other. Yeah, we're not like you can tell you can you can have Boone Jenner. Yep. Um, you can have Gabriel Carlson, but you can't have Josh Anderson and Gabriel Carlson and a pick. It was like very like specific, right? Like these were the things. It was it was fascinating stuff. Uh, and then, you know, Nashville wouldn't get their first round pick involved. Yeah. Uh, and then that, cause, cause that was Fabro, Gerard and Tolvanen. Yeah. Yep, yep. Remember, that was right after Tolvanen got drafted. So those were those, but they, they refused to give up a first rounder. They would not do it under yep. pretty much any circumstances, unless it was like for first straight up. <clears throat> And so those were those were some of the things that they were weighing. Now, fast forward, fast forward, rewind a year prior to Patrick Waugh's last year. And remember, remember when Waugh called out Duchesne for the 30th, for goal, the 30th yeah. goal. Yep. And that inspired Waugh to want to move Duchesne in the offseason. Before Duchesne had requested uh, um, the trade out. Yeah, because you, you keep in mind the timeline here. His request of the trade came around Christmas of the lost season. Yep. So there was, and this is what we're getting to right here. This was right after Shabbat. Um, not, not had like broken out, but it was the year before Shabbat's like big dominant year where he became the blue chip prospect. The ads, the ads had Zabanajad and Shabbat kind of on the table for Duchesne. Just those, just straight up. Man, Ottawa was just trying to lose that deal. How? I mean, how interesting would that have been? Like, skip the Bow and Byram and the Sam yeah. Gerard. You know, assume, assume because just assume that Makar still happens. Yeah, sure. Because sure. we can't, we can't trade. You, you, can't change that much history and still have this conversation. Yep. But you get rid of all the stuff that they got, and then you throw Zabanajad in there. He's your two C behind McKinnon, and then Shabbat next to Makar. If he still has that breakout, which he would, so yeah, there would have been no reason for him not to have that breakout. Yeah. I mean, the Cadre deal doesn't happen. Barry goes for something else. Yeah. Right. Entirely different conversation on the Barry side. It, yeah. You're probably looking to shore up a left wing, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, you still like, you still probably make the Burkowski deal. Yep. But what do you do with Barry at that point? Because where, where do you know, does that price soften and do they make the, the rumored JT Miller deal? Yeah, that was true. that was talked about at the draft last year. Do they make they wouldn't need to make the Bo Horvat push that they made in the Barry deal uh when they talked to Vancouver because they would have had Sabana Chad. Yeah. I, I mean just how much does it change? You're probably looking for Barry, you're you're probably even open to futures at that point and not all right. I mean, you're talking like you could put Alex Kerfoot on the left wing at that point if you're the Evs. Yeah. 
Well, I mean, Kerfoot, I mean, Kerfoot and Burakovsky and Zibanejad is right. your, second, your line. second line. Second line. So it could have been mightily you're, different. <laughs> you're rolling out, you're rolling out Shabbat and Makar as your top pairing, and it's just like it's a totally different universe. Yep. That you're living in. You know, you don't have Sam Gerard, you don't have Bowen Byram, you don't have Shane Bowers. But you you assume that a lot of the rest of this stays the same. Yeah. I so, I, Sam Gerard to Chabot, different players, but they fill the same defensive role essentially. It's, it's also the same. Uh, it's also a similar conversation of you know, but that deal doesn't work out. Wa doesn't get his way. If that deal yeah. works out and Wa's still getting his way with the front office, that's where the Radulov thing might happen. Yeah, well, I mean, the spiraling effects of of the Evs continuing to push for win now. Who even knows? Right. So. Would have been would have been interesting, right? Like that's such a different universe. Yeah, you know, Alex Radulov isn't scoring power play goals left and right off of random body parts in the second round last year to beat the Avs. Yep, you know, he's in an Av sweater, looking Hopefully. all crazy, scoring crazy goals still. But <laughs> yeah, right. Like <laughs> you're hoping in the second round, then then you know you're Burakovsky and Radulov and Kerfoot, right? Yep. And, and Zavanajad. You know, maybe maybe with Radulov, you don't make the Burakovsky deal. Yeah, true. Radulov could fill that role kind of. Yeah. So interesting, interesting trickle down effect there from not making that deal, especially with the uh WA front office and all the changes and things. So I thought I always thought that's an that's an interesting wrinkle. And then you know, you look at Carolina as the other big one with Noah Hannafin and yep. the 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 um Netches pick the deal that was allegedly super close on the draft floor. Yeah. They talked and talked and talked and thought they had it. And then it was, well, we, now we want a second rounder and well, now we want this and we want that. And they just couldn't find the, the, the ground where each side was unhappy, but, but miserable enough to do it. And, and knowing what we know now that Noah Hannafin part, would not feel great. That deal wouldn't feel great at all. I mean, think yeah. about that. If you'd rather you take Zab- Zabanajad and Shabbat ten times out of ten over Hanfin yeah. and, and Netches. And that's you know, Netches is a fine young prospect and a good and good young NHL player already. <sighs> now if you could have flipped Hanifin into Dougie Hamilton still <laughs> that's a different I mean, story. Then, yeah. then you're really like you're really feeling good then with the defense with McCarr, Hamilton, and and uh, I guess anybody else. Yeah, yeah, Johnson, whatever other, whoever you want to throw out there. <laughs> yeah, um, be a little little right heavy though. Yeah, for sure. Which would be weird. Maybe you don't take Timmons then. Maybe you take Nick Hague instead. But anyway, that's before we before we got into the actual deal. I thought it would be fun to revisit some of the conversations because we, I mean, the data Adrian and I were dealing with. We chased that thing for so long. So and there many were just, different stories. Yeah, there were so many scenarios that teams were talking about. You know, I'm I'm trying to remember. Uh, also, the year before, um, keep in mind the year before when uh, PK Subban got traded for Shea Weber. The Avs were in on that one um, because they, uh, but Montreal wanted Barry and Duchesne. Yep. And you remember at the time it would have been like, oh my God, because PK Subban was still PK right. Subban. He was but a you look at it today. And then it would have been like, oh no. <laughs> yeah. And both of those teams would have been like, geez, that deal was kind of a. <laughs> Nobody happy with that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, what in the world? So, uh, and then, you know, that was also the same era where uh, I saw somebody in the chat mentioned it, where they talked about Landeskog to Boston yep. for, for Carlo and stuff because they wouldn't move on. They wouldn't give up McAvoy and the abs were like, we're not just giving you Gabe Landeskog. <laughs> yeah. Gabe Landy's the Landy rather is worth a little bit more than that, but yeah. And then the Ottawa, uh, the Ottawa portion of this was interesting because it wasn't Shane Bowers that the team was initially after. It was called yeah. White. Yeah. And um, 
supposedly. Um, I mean, not not really, uh, Mike. Um, not really. Uh, but supposedly, Ottawa would have been okay giving up White, but the Abs wanted the staggered NHL timeline that Bowers gave them. Yep. And they were they really liked the draft. They really liked him. He just gotten drafted. Remember. They really liked him that year. They just didn't have a they didn't have a pick in the range to get him. And because uh, if you if you look at Shane Bowers' draft profile, I mean, how much does it fit what they just did at the draft? Right. With skating and IQ. And and good size. Yeah, pretty much. You know, like great, great profile for exactly what um exactly what the abs really were were really after and because they really they had i remember uh talking to some of them after um after the deal and and being like hey talk to me you know talk to me about bowers a little bit you know not a guy that we're ever going to have a press conference about because he got drafted by a different team but what did you like about him you know and it was it was the size the skating and and um the iq the, the maturity the polish as a person really came across well, which is something that they value very highly. Um, and then, you know, their their gamble was, we think he could be a two or three C for us. Now a couple of years have passed, and you're saying, hey, if you can get a third, if you can get a solid third line center out of Shane Bowers right now, you and I both would say absolutely hard yep. yes. Yep. So I think the abs would too. I think um, so. I think then and that's, I do this all the time because I, I don't want people because people make these leaps, but that's no knock on JT Comfort. That's just that Shane Powers, he, he's cheaper. He's $3 million, he's $2 million cheaper right now than JT Comfort. Cheaper and, and a little bit more faith <clears throat> in the defensive side of the game, I think. But Well, and, and we've seen with, with Comfort, like, hey, maybe if you put him on the wing, his defense yep. gets better, right? Right, like, exactly. It, it limits him a little bit. And then all of a sudden you're looking at, could you have a... a Cal Bowers Comfort Trio is your third line where you're just like, look at this homegrown. Look at yeah. this. This is <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. So on that note, we do have to take our first period break. WGT Golf coming this weekend. We are having the election open at Congressional. All three of our country clubs will be able to participate. And better yet, you do not have to top score this tournament to win. Everyone has a chance to win. And it's not just for bragging rights this time. It's for DNVR merch. So be sure to enter into this closest to the whole challenge. And once you complete it, submit your screenshot either to the pinned tweet over on the main DNVR Sports Twitter. It's the pinned one, so you need to go to the account. It, the account, it should be right at the top there. Or you can always mail them to info at ddnvr.com as well. Either way, just send us your screenshot, and you'll be entered to win. If you do win the random raffle, you will have your choice of a DNVR shirt or mask, and we'll ship it straight to you wherever you're at. So be sure to jump into this one and get yourself some free merch. If you haven't joined yet, go to dnvrgolf.com to download and search for DNVR3 to join our third clubhouse and get in on some of this action. So good luck to everyone in that one. Hope y'all win yourselves some merch. Second period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast presented by DraftKings Sportsbook. Let's go ahead and, and actually break down the actual trade that was very quickly. So on November 5th, 2017, the Avs traded Matt Duchesne to Ottawa for Shane Bowers, Andrew Hammond, a conditional first round pick, a third round pick, and Kyle Turris, which they then flipped Turris immediately to Nashville for Sam Gerrard, Vlad Kamenev, and a 2018 second round pick. Now, Everybody was shocked at how much this ended up being. It, it, the second it came out, it felt like a ton of stuff. <laughs> it was seven pieces for one. Yep. I, I And I think the big part of it was... Wow, Ottawa really yeah. gave up all of that to go from Kyle Turris to Matt Duchesne. Yeah, and it was it was that the 
the package was interesting because at the time it was like Sam Gerard was like a solid defensive prospect. Yep. Vlad Kamenev and Sam Gerard were about the similar caliber of prospect. Yep. Kamenev, Kamenev was the most established player. Yeah, I, I remember outside I made, of Andrew Hammond. When I made my video on the trade, I was like, I think the guy who's most likely to affect the abs in the immediate future was Vlad Kamenev. Yeah, and well, then, and you remember he he got in the lineup almost yeah, right away. And then his arm blew yeah, up, but right. And and he was a guy that I had talked. We talked so much about Nashville. I targeted him and said, "This is the guy they need to be going after for a long time." Yep. And it was. I mean, do you remember that he was Vlad Kamen at the time of that trade was twenty one years old, coming off a fifty point season in the AHL. Yep. Like there was a lot of reason. To be optimistic about Kamenev, I thought that they would view him more as a wing because they were just, they even back then, they had so many centers that they were trying to figure out. Yep. And they, even then, they were like, no, we're going to put him on, we're going to put him in the middle of the ice and see what happens. Look, a guy that skates like he did, like he's a good skater, wasn't, wasn't fantastic or anything, but had his kind of size in his hands. It was not hard to dream on a guy like that. For sure. It just he just didn't have the engagement, and we all know how things have turned out. But at the time, Gerard Kamenev, intriguing prospects, right? Yeah. But Shane Bowers, a low first round pick. The other first round pick from Ottawa that they got was Lotto protected, and I remember doing the podcast. Yeah. And like being that. like, look. This will end up in the 20s or something. Yeah, I, I did a solo podcast, a 40-minute solo podcast breakdown that night. I was barely awake because I did it in like, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'd already written three articles or whatever. And I was like, look, this is going to be a pick in the 20s. It'll be it'll be great because the, the abs will have essentially doubled up on first-round picks two years in a row. Because they got Bowers, who came from the 17 draft. So it's like that 17 draft, it was, it was 17? Or was he 18? Bowers was 17. thought he was 17. So it was like, it, it was essentially like Bowers, McCarr, and Timmons was the 17 draft class. Yep. And that was, you know, and you're like, boom, that's that's your key youth movement right there those guys and then you in the in then in the 19 uh, or in the 18 draft they were going to have two first round picks again and we weren't expecting the abs remember to be very good right we were still we were still sitting around you know and this was before you even joined up but like yeah. nobody in the abs community was talking about the postseason we were talking about top 10 picks yep and so we were we were looking at you know I was dreaming on Svechnikov and we were, you know, Kachuk was about to have a great WJCs. Like we were, we were talking about that, the top of that 18 draft class, you know, you're looking at uh, the guys like Bouchard and Dobson and thinking this is a good class for defenders. Yep. Like this class for defenders. This is a good, this is, this is a good first round pick for them to have. And then they can use the Ottawa pick on whatever. And then, Obviously, things broke a different way. Yeah, and then things obviously like a very different reality played out, and they end up with Bowen Byram. Sam Gerard comes in and, and makes the team immediately. Yep. This is one of the things that the Avs have, you know, for all of the they can't promote their young players, and for all of our development frustrations, this is where you have the conversation of look, they. They gave a job to Sam Gerard at 19 years old. Yeah. Sam. They didn't have to do that. The Sam Gerard story is. It felt like the first big win post Patrick Wire. Because obviously the 16 17 season was a, was a total throwaway, right? Uh, so you get into the 17 18 season and. They really didn't do very much that off season uh, in the grand scheme, and then they trade Duchesne, and ten games later, Gerard is stuck in the lineup, and you're playing that kid 
in your top four right away, basically. And obviously now it, it's worked out great. Gerard's on a seven year deal and is going to be an av for the majority of his career. So it, it really, it felt like one of the first big steps back towards getting this franchise to where everyone wants it to be. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the residual pieces that they got, you know, some of the complimentary pieces that they got, they got a second rounder from Nashville uh, and a, a third rounder from Ottawa, which, you know, the year came in the year after. And so you're like, okay, like this is more, these are more picks. Uh, and then Andrew Hammond. Yep. The guy where it was, a playoff game. <laughs> it was like, Hey, look like Andrew Hammond is clearly at the time he, um, he was buried in, in the AHL, but he was still on the NHL deal that he signed after the Hamburglar streak that got him paid. Yeah. And, you know, he was buried. Yep. They were literally paying him like, like, like $1.2 like, million dollars yeah, or something, something like that. to play in the AHL. And so that was just a cap dump where it was like, please take this guy and we'll give you this third round pick uh, for it. And they were like, <laughs> okay. And he ended up winning a, play- a playoff game for them. And it was like, okay, well, that's fun. Yeah. They'd... And yes, that we're getting there. I mean, it's top to bottom. The Where we sit today, Vlad Kamenev is the least valuable piece out of this entire deal. Well, maybe the third round pick, but. Well, I mean, right now you'd say Matt Steinberg is more valuable than Kamenev because. Today. You, yeah. you don't, you don't know what his future holds. Right. Whereas Kamenev, you're like, look, you've you they've retained his his rights, um, and that but he's going he going to Russia, <laughs> so it's yeah. it's definitely hard to to get this much value out of every single piece. And and look, some of the value the jury's still out on, right? Like Shane Bauer still has to make the NHL. Yeah, uh, the second round pick, which they ended up trading back with uh, to get Pitt- Anna Pittsburgh. In. Yeah, with Pittsburgh. Um, they yep. took Hollander, I believe. Yep, they took Philip Hollander. The Avs got Eustace Ananen and Danila Zaravilov. And Zaravilov, you know, we'll see. But Eustace Ananen is a high-grade goalie prospect now. Yeah. So. <laughs> like, there's there's a decent chance that the Avs walk out of that trade with two of their top four defensemen. Yep. Um, like, long-term, two of their top four defensemen, a third-line center, and a number one goaltender. Which is... And at the time Wild. the deal was made, the goal was get a defenseman. Yep. Get one impact defenseman and hope you get a second piece. They and got, at, they at the very idea. at the very worst, if every single player from this deal busts, which is possible, um, uh, every single unproven player busts and they just got Sam Gerard, they still accomplished their goal. It would yeah. be a letdown given yeah. how many pieces and the fact that they used a top five pick on Byram and, you know, but at the same time, like they, their goal was get an impact defenseman. And if all they end up with is Sam Gerard out of that trade, it's still a deal that it's you had, you absolutely trade. make. Yeah. It's still a trade that the Avs win, I think. Yeah. No, it's not even like Vince Carter at the dunk contest. It's like Vince Carter on Frederick Weiss. <laughs> At the Olympics, <laughs> that was that was the Duchesne deal. Jumping over a man, <laughs> yeah, and as he's doing it, flying by yeah. and putting his manscaped balls right Straight in front of his face. face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's it's an incredible trade. Um, we do need to take our second period break here and acknowledge Breckenridge Brewery because, boy, I bet. Melnick really wants to drink every single day when this trade gets brought up. But, you know, either way, you can go on down to the DNVR bar and pick up eight different Breck brews on tap. Or, of course, you can always go to the source, the farmhouse down in Littleton, where they have dozens of flavors of beer for you to try and even get it local to you at your local liquor store. They probably have something no matter what. But if you want to make sure you can use the Breck beer locator online to see the liquor store that has the beer you're looking for near you 
third period of the DNVR Avalanche podcast. AJ, I'm going to I'm going to make a comparison that shouldn't be made right now. The Eric Lindros trade. Oh, I'm so sick of this trade. I don't want to Yo, talk. Where, where was Go Caps yesterday when we were talking yeah. about the Caps? We talked all about your Caps yesterday. Yeah, and go back and watch that there. show. Um, I don't want to talk about the spiraling things that happened from the Lindros trade. The million trades that, that are branched off of that tree. I just want to... I'm, I'm <laughs> of the opinion the Avs still want to stay on the cup even if they don't make that deal. They very well may. It's not like it's not like Joe Sackick and Eric Lindros would have been a bad center group to go to to go to battle with, right? But looking at that trade, they ended up with something that isn't that far off on paper from from what the Avs got. A little bit different. They ended up with Steve Duchesne, uh, Peter Forsberg, Ron Hextall, Kerry Huffman. I guess is the Nordiques at the time. Uh, Kerry Huffman, and Mike Ricci, and then what ended up being two first round picks. And you're talking about outside of Peter Forsberg who was the surefire Hall of Famer that they got mm-hmm. out of that deal. That's not that different than what the Avs got in this Matt Duchesne trade, I don't think. Uh, a little bit older, uh, but picking up Mike Ricci on the side, if Sam Girard, well, we already know Sam Girard is solid. If Bowen Byram turns into something solid, uh, if Eustace and then turns into something solid. You're talking about a similar number of quality pieces in the NHL. Keep in mind though, um, Mike Ricci was the fourth overall pick in 1990. That is true. And like never really lived up to the hype, but yeah. there's your Bowen Byron piece. Yep. So just saying, no, you're no, I'm saying you're exactly correct. I'm, yeah. I'm trying to, to sort of gauge value of the two. And and look, yes, the Eric Lindros trade is legendary and a, a freak thing. Yeah. Um, and, well, and, and that, the, the Lindros deal, we look at the Lindros deal not because of what they got out of it, but because of what came next. Right. And, and that's kind of the point that I was slowly leading into is uh, Sam Gerrard has been locked up and, and will likely stay in AV, but as these pieces continue to develop, if the Evs do start getting NHLers out of them, what trade tree is this going to spawn? The trade tree on the other side of the deal, Matt Duchesne has already been traded once again by Ottawa. And there's a bunch of other pieces that, that have uh, shrapneled off of that. Yeah. But on the Av side of things, this could spawn a fairly lengthy trade tree as well. Yeah, I mean, it started to a little bit, like that trade down. Yep. Um, so that you have Ananen and, and Drabalov. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. It could end up Lindrosian in that the Avs get their number one goaltender out of both of those subsequent deals. Yeah, right. <laughs> that came as a result of the initial trade. So that could be fun. You know, it's still a long shot to happen, but it would be fun. And and what does it you know what what trade tree does it resemble? Um, I mean, like I said, I it's mean, an it's, ill-advised it's, comparison at this point. It's a but. as a trade, like as a fun tree to follow. It it would be an all time great. As a did it work out? Did anybody get any better out of it? Nashville, the answer was no. Definitely not. Ottawa, yeah. the answer was no. Though it kind of sort of started them on their rebuild. They didn't really get very much from Columbus. So in a very roundabout way. It definitely didn't make them better in the immediate, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so neither one of those neither one of those teams really are feeling any good about it. Yeah. The abs the abs will feel it sort of depends. You know, how do, what do they get out of Shane Bowers? What happens with uh what happened with Bo and Byron? I mean, look, I think right now the Avs feel really good about it, but will they feel like this was one of the best trades in team history in a, in three, four, five, six years? They should. Uh, even if it just ends up being Gerard, you also consider the cultural impact. Yeah. Um, you know, which is anecdotal from guys like me, but 
like we can tell you there was a huge weight lifted off of that team when Duchesne was gone. Yeah. It's I've... literally our video yesterday, man. Yep. Whatever whatever we titled the video yesterday. Uh <laughs> you like that I'm bald. I think it's the teams with work to do or something. And, and yeah, it was about teams with sour cap issues. Yeah, there's a picture of Sergachev on there. Um, uh, yeah, but this, this, you know, the cultural impact is big. Uh, the, the McKinnon breakout, I always struggle with people being like, well, Duchesne was gone. McKinnon could break out now. He was he, breaking out before that. In the, it in had that already time. kind of yeah. started. Um, but certainly personality wise, it really, he was Nate, Nate always kind of played himself down a little bit. Yeah. It's been a very different Nathan McKinnon since Matthew Shane left. I'll say that just from somebody that talks to him a lot. Sure. He was, a, he was a very different guy back then. There was more room for him. And, to be him. and, and you do wonder like how much of that is just maturity, right? How much is that a guy becoming 22 and getting more comfortable in his own skin? How much of that? Like it's, it's, Matt Duchesne comes off as, like, the evil villain. Like, he's the reason Nathan McKinnon wasn't any good. He's the reason Gabe Landeskog never fulfilled his potential. He's the reason the Avs couldn't make the playoffs. He's the reason for all these evil things, right? Like, <coughs> Matt Duchesne and Patrick, Patrick Waugh became villains. And it's just, it's it's. I think it's a little miscast. Yeah. I would agree with that for it's, sure. It's like, look, did did leaving him open up the door for kind of the cultural revolution that took place inside that locker room? Yes. Does that make him a bad guy? No. Come on. It's just because just because the Avs guys didn't necessarily get along with him at the highest level doesn't doesn't make Matt Duchesne a bad dude. Plenty of plenty of former Avs went to the guy's wedding. You know, like. I mean, it's a conversation we've had a million times. It's the locker room impact isn't great, but the larger problem with the abs and Matt Duchesne for the majority of his career in Colorado is that he's not a one C on a contending yeah. team. The, the raw reality was that he just did not quite live up to that billing yep. that they needed from him. You look at the difference between him and JT uh, in, in the aisles. One of one of them was a franchise caliber player, and the other one wasn't. Did did that did that lead to significantly more success for the Islanders? No. Not you need more than that. that. You just it's need more than that. It's a nice start. You got to have that guy. Yep. But they just kept wanting a little bit more from from Duchesne, and he he didn't have more to give. Yep. You know it was it was unfair from from a fan's perspective to continue to ask that guy for more. It was unfair from a front office perspective to ask that guy to be what he couldn't be. But the reality is that's what the yeah. Avs needed. Well, I mean, it's kind of like you look at the Rangers right now. Look, they're going to have otherworldly wing play between yep. Panarin and Kako and and, and Lafreniere. But can Zabanajed be a hundred and ten point player? No. How much will that hold them back to be determined? But right now, like he, you know, as the one C, he and and, and Strom as the two C, like that's their weak link offensively. Yep. yep. Their their wing play is going to outpace their centers. And in Colorado, like Duchesne just wasn't quite good. They kept trying to build around him and they just couldn't do it. Yep. He just wasn't, he just wasn't quite good enough. You could build a mediocre team around Matt Duchesne, but you couldn't build a cup team. Yep. And that was the problem. And that's that's what's part of part of what the the Nashville thing that they've done, where they're trying to build around multiple of those guys. Oh, you can't you can't build a cup team around Duchesne. Okay. Well, how about we build two top lines? Two like mediocre top lines. Yeah. Instead of like full of stars like Arvidsson and Forsberg and Johansson and Duchesne and you know no longer but was Craig Smith and probably will end up being Mike Hoffman like good players like it's like quality out. but if you don't have that true superstar forward it's hard yeah it's hard you've got to get that production from somewhere yep you know we saw it with Dallas like 
Dallas, Jamie Ben finally played up to, uh, you know, relive the Jamie Ben yeah. glory days, basically. And and then they they got Miro Haskin in. Yep. So it was, yeah, I mean, they rolled the dice with Duchesne. You know, the, the O'Reilly thing is a whole other bag of animals. Like, that's that's not even a phrase. <laughs> it's a whole other it's a whole other ball of wax. <laughs> bag of animals. Yeah. I don't what, know. What kind of animals are we stuffing in? Yeah, what kind of what kind of bag is it? <laughs> what sort of what sort of like we're I'm gonna get PETA called on us. Yeah. <laughs> uh so I said bag of animals and Rex walked into the room, yeah. so he heard. Rex is he'll eat the bag of animals and feel good about it, so um the Duchesne trade Ultimately, it's in a strange spot right now because its legacy is not going to be defined and for at least another half decade, maybe more on the Av side. Anyway, uh, I think I think by I think five years from now we'll have a really good feel of what they got. Yeah, and by then you know Sam Gerrard will be in his prime. Uh, you'll see whatever the abs are going to get out of Bowers and Annan will be decided by then. And, and maybe the accessory yeah. pieces have become something or not. Who knows? But yeah, definitely. So it's so far it's good. Does it have the potential to be great? I guess is the cert question I'm circling back around to. What yeah. does, what would it take for this to be a great trade? Annan developing both Annan and Bowers a Stanley Cup. Um, the, uh, what would it take for it to be? Say top three trade in franchise history. Byron becomes an all-star. Annan becomes your number one goaltender. Gerard continues to be what Gerard is, which is a really good second pairing defenseman. I mean, that alone. Yeah. You, Shane Bowers becomes a, a, your Mike Ricci, your three C on a cup winning team. All of it, or just some of it? All of it. I mean, well, and then and then you're talking about that as it's the same caliber, right? Yeah. I mean the the only the only thing that makes it different is that Lindros and Forsberg were both Hall of Fame players, and right. it would be a big leap for Duchesne, Obviously, at this point, yeah, not going to make not a Hall of Fame for sure. Um, and it would be a huge leap for Bowen Byron to be a Hall of Fame player. That's part of what makes the Lindros Forsberg deal so enormous. Crazy. Yeah. Is that both teams might do it again because they ended up getting franchise players out of it. Yep. You know, and like Mike Ricci like did not turn into a superstar that you thought he might right, have. Right. You know, maybe maybe then you know, <laughs> maybe maybe Quebec decides to to just keep Lindros and roll with Sackick on the left side of Sundin and Lindros. I mean, pretty sure Lindros would have never played for Quebec, but I mean, you know, that's obviously like the assumption though, is like if they don't do it and he doesn't be a prissy bitch right, and right. he just plays, right? Like, yeah. so oh, uh, we will be getting into some NHL 21 at some point. It's just, I'm leaving town tomorrow and I'm not taking the PlayStation with me. Cause I can't, I can't fit it in my bag. Yep. Um, but we will be getting to it for sure. We'll be playing that. We'll probably be streaming some other stuff. I'll stream something this weekend on the Twitch channel for the people that like to hang out there. But yeah, this is PS is the last you guys are going to see of me for a bit. Um, yep. uh, when I get to Winnipeg, I'm going on my vacation, which I was supposed to go on like two months, months two, ago. Two months ago. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I am, I am Long taking some time off. off. Um, I will just, I'm going to turn my phone off and I'm just going to decompress from the world. Uh, assuming this election ever gets sorted out. Yeah. It'll be me and Evan will be your, your guides through the avalanche universe. Yeah. While AJ's away for a bit, but so that should be fun too. We got free skate Friday coming up tomorrow. I haven't told Evan yet, but I'm thinking we're going to do a, an NHL logo draft. In the in the sense of which are the best logos in the league, so. Woof. But I see. I'm allowing old logos too. Is the thing. So, 
I think there's some good ones out there. We'll see. Anyway, we can wrap up today's show. Uh, of course, sponsored by Strava Craft Coffee, the CBD-infused coffee that has really changed lives. Get that cold brew down at the DNVR bar as well. Look, if you want DNVR stuff, the DNVR bar is the place to go. You can get our merch down there as well. It's awesome. If you want Strava, you can, of course, get it from StravaCraftCoffee.com because... That's great, too. You can get 20% off there with code DNVR20, or you can sign up for their subscription service if you really love it and get 20% off for weeks and weeks of coffee ordered. Yeah, I guess that's all we got to say. Um, Ooh, last question. You want to tackle that one? Non-biased opinion before you guys leave. Who's better, McDavid or McKinnon? If you were starting a franchise... To, uh, to, to let me let me ask this one clarifying question. Yeah, are we considering the salary cap? Because if it's if you're considering the cap, you take Mac every single time. You don't even yeah. think about it. Yep. Um. Otherwise, it's danger close. <laughs> like I think I probably still barely lean McDavid. Me too, but it's but, very close. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh. It's tightened up a lot in the last yep. year. Yep. The, I, it's just McDavid's just kind of on a run that we almost never see in the modern yep. NHL. Something, so. something freaky. The it's, he's he's so special. As, it's just insane. As soon as McKinnon eclipses a hundred points in a season, it'll be McKinnon. I feel I, skills and overall playing ability, man. I just don't think there's anybody more talented. Yep. Than McDavid, but when you consider an intangible aspect of it, that's not to say that McDavid isn't a crazy competitor or any of that. Just that Nathan McKinnon is built yeah. like the all-time greats, McDavid. and I, I, I just don't know McDavid well enough. Look, and, and to, to say the same, you're picking nits here because McDavid's a surefire Hall of Famer if he oh stays healthy, God. but. I uh, you put this a long time ago. I think you kind of put it like this: McDavid mechanically is a hockey playing robot. He doesn't yeah. do anything wrong. He does everything perfectly. Yeah. But McKinnon can do things that he can't because McKinnon is a tank, basically. Yeah. There's a there's a certain power element to McKinnon's game that definitely, and part of that I think is mentality. Yeah. Um, but there are things that McDavid does that I don't think McKinnon can. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so it's 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 super. It's like razor thin margin. Um, but as if just pure hockey players, I would probably still take McDavid. Yeah, I I agree. I I think it's going to be fascinating because I think we should start working on setting up our franchise draft for this off season. Yep. Um, and it all, I'm I'm always curious where those guys get taken could realistically see two abs go in the top five top 10 certainly it's gonna be it's well i can tell you if i pick 17th again i'm not getting Pedersen again yeah that's true too <laughs> so you picked second i mean you had, you had the yeah i didn't have to try yeah you had the capert spot you were just like whatever yep <laughs> um all right that's gonna do it for today's show Thank you, everyone, watching, listening, all of that. You know the drill. We will be back tomorrow with Free Skate Friday. Evan, I, and I believe Kale. Uh, but, yeah, we'll talk to you then.